I'm never sure that streaming is going to work from my house because of the internet, which we'll talk about shortly. Yeah, that's the the $80 million question as all times. Which but, you know, weird because, thankfully, yeah. mm-hmm. you can record it locally and you will get a good version someday. It's just not <laughs> the day that we record yeah, it. <laughs> at worst, I guess I record it myself and we comment on it later. Or you record it yourself, we comment on it live and then our uh oh i guess if our hmm, yeah if our something, audio goes out, something that could just be a occurred to me we could yeah i mean i guess could, we can always re- talk over the sped up footage later or something we yeah. could mst3k it oh my goodness that would be pretty good <laughs> Yeah, I hit this button. Hit yeah. it. Uh, can we talk about my internet first on Hello? Welcome. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, wow. Dive, dive yeah, right I mean, in. I I love discussions about internet. I, it's a moment where I get to say I'm right. Hello. Welcome to We Were Gamers 204. This is Andy. Mm-hmm. Michael's here. Maybe hey, Michael's everybody. not here. <laughs> Getting distracted already. We're off uh, to a great huh? start. Good times. JJ, hi. Hello. All right. 700 episodes on this podcast ago. Uh, I recanted a story of AT&T knocking on my door and saying fiber was in my area. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's weird. I see no fiber having been dug into the streets and you certainly haven't been working on the poles for the last months. What you're saying is you have upgraded again your DSL service. So I promptly did not uh, purchase the AT&T fiber because the DSL service was body here Mm -hmm. well to say the least michael's laughing because he knows yeah yeah i know (laughs) well two things michael the cable has gotten spotty here oh no i have a feeling it is due to the current conditions of uh, everyone being at home all the time and the inherent downside of cable being that Everyone shares the pipe, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And therefore, sometimes I'm getting my normal 70 down and f- 5 up. And sometimes I get 2 down and 0. 0.5 up. Yeah. I, that I second scenario noticed. there sounds a lot like everyone on your block is watching Netflix. <laughs> yep. I have noticed that. I have noticed that here as well. That there are times during the day where my data will basically just slow to a crawl and everything will stop loading for, you know, 15, 20 seconds on my laptop and then it'll pick right back up. But yep. Yeah. Definitely had those like, well, this website's just not loading for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Everything's connected. Restarted the router a couple times. That uh, I have not had that problem because you're on with DSL. my, my, uh, super fast AT&T DSL. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, 50 down, it's it's okay. Well, but you also uh, have like 10 up, not, right? No, I think I get like 5 or oh. 10 up. Yeah, wait, no, 10. 10 up. 5, 10, I don't know. Anyway, something like that. Anyway, uh, the thing that's spotty is the connection from the DVR to the TV in the other room, uh, mm. which is... Right, because it's like on the just, Wi-Fi thing, and it has to go through yeah, their network and handshake and all that sort of stuff. The, oh, it's but it's interesting because the DV like the anyway, their thing sucks, and it just like decides sometime that it doesn't want to talk to the TV out in the living room uh, anymore, and so yeah. then you have to like restart all the boxes, and it takes yep. ten minutes. Yeah, that's the, a problem. Um, that's a problem that caused me to but, drop AT and T. You know. Yeah, but the service is fine. Like, I can be on the yeah. internet, and it's working just fine that whole time. Well, we had the sure, problems yeah. with the service, too. It, and the, the TV continues working. It's just you can't talk to the DVR. Weird. We also yeah. have... Uh, we Well, so... Funny story part one. They're ripping up our street to put in new water pipes, which is a good thing. Yeah, to it which, seems like something you want. Water. To which I thought to myself... Hmm. I really wish somebody had called Google and told them so that they could have started installing fiber while they were ripping all these roads up. You think Google cares about a suburban neighborhood, my man? Probably <laughs> not. Yeah, that's going to be a no. Probably not. None of them do, as far as I can mm-hmm. tell. 
Correct. They all want the uh, new apartments that are going in, right? Or they also want the neighborhood that is being built. Mm -hmm. where yeah, where it's easy to just come in and lay the cable while they're laying everything else. You would and think, where though, they can be the only provider to the entire neighborhood. You would think, though, like a, a city would think that's an advertisement, right? Hey, we have Google Fiber in our city. Cool. Uh, yeah, that that one track of homes has Google Fiber in their city. <laughs> well, that's There's exactly like 15 what. Fifteen houses, fifteen families. Well, they don't care. That's not enough. That's exactly what the city of Irvine has done, yep. rolling out fiber to all of their apartment complexes. Yep. It wouldn't be none because they've been slowly doing this for the last five years of ripping up. They're ripping up all the water pipes in our city, all of them. So yeah, we don't have I, I, like, little... I, I understand your point was correct that like eventually they would get there, mm -hmm. but no city is ever going to prioritize that. They don't care sure, enough about not. you. Yeah, I understand. It's Unfortunately, just, I, this is why I said does not work for us. Look, this is why I said, <laughs> man, it sure is a bummer that that's not a thing that it could ever happen, <laughs> even though this road is torn up right in front of me. Yeah, you just it is I could bummer. dig the hole to put the fiber from there to there, please. Anyway, uh, they thought they hit an underground AT&T line. Because it's buried somewhere in the neighborhood for some other people. Not me, because I could get mine from a pole, like it's 1923. Uh, and so there's an AT&T truck sitting in front of my house. I then okay. cajoled this person into admitting that they do not have fiber in my neighborhood. <laughs> I mean... Were you just bored and wanted to berate a technician? <laughs> Absolutely not. I was very kind to him because I'm really frustrated with my current internet and I wanted to find out if AT&T had improved any. I, I, can env I can envision you just standing out there next to him going, buddy. Heck, buddy. Heck, buddy. Heck, come on. Heckling come him on. six feet away. <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't mean. I was very nice. He had no previous experience with my situation therefore did not deserve any negativity and did not receive no, any. Uh, i i know you're not mean to those kind of people so that's not what i was trying to say <laughs> i was just like i can picture the opposite person who is like you're lying i know you're lying i can tell i see it i i can see the pipes man <laughs> oh he readily admitted it he, and the thing that they yeah. said was you know, those people that knock on doors in the neighborhood are contractors. And uh, they don't have any uh, care. They'll yeah. just lie to you. And yep. so, you know, they wear an AT&T shirt, but they just want to excel. Yeah, they'll say whatever they need to say. Uh -huh. Yep. I had a person from Spectrum do that to me uh, yeah, a few months ago at this point. And I was like, you know, uh, cable is a shared pipe for the whole neighborhood, man. And if everyone was on at the same time, they're like, no, no, that's not how it works. Uh, no, no, it's not. I'm like, look, I work in this field. I'm right. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> like, thank you for coming, but no. <laughs> I was very happy with it. It was stable until, you know, the pen apocalypse happened. So, I don't <laughs> know. I'm considering AT&T again. They say they, this man was telling me they had improved some of the pieces of equipment that were problems before. So, yeah, I, like, I, I, I you know, I have been generally re very happy with my service here. Um, I will ad readily admit that I wish it was faster and I have no option for that. So that uh, does mine suck. can get up to like 400 down. Yeah. So they have uh, advertised that in my area, but it is not, not available your home. <laughs> not for me. Not enough bonded uh, pairs in your box. Sounds like <laughs> it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Last homeowners minute for you guys. And this is just a funny anecdote. Did you know if you use a tool, I was using a, what they call an oscillating tool. It vibrates a mm -hmm. blade so that it'll cut things through with vibration, meaning you generally can't cut yourself with it too badly. Right. Uh, it will make your hands so that you cannot feel the haptic feedback on your phone for about half an hour. Oh, the vibration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that doubt sense. that. It was an interesting feeling, unlocking my phone and not feeling kickback. Like you, because it's not a button. There's no depth. And so my hands have been fully vibrated, machine. I can't feel. It's funny because I actually turn that haptic feedback off on a lot no, of cases on my really? phone. Yeah, dude, I hate that stuff. Why? Because it's annoying. I'm, just, I'm using the software, man. I don't need a little doop, 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 doop every time I, no. Mm. No. 
but I some of the buttons, like when I press the actual buttons on the phone, I want it to vibrate, but like the software keyboard or whatever. All right. Let's uh, talk about I, games. It, uh, yeah, man. Wow. Video games are still happening somehow. <laughs> somehow. Michael is full on the video games. I don't know when or how this happened. But your Steam level is out of control, sir. I noticed this yesterday. <laughs> yeah, you, he's uh, a... I, yeah, as man. a man that owns many hundreds of games in Steam, I am not certain how you lapped me. Yeah, I don't remember exactly when, uh, what it was that caused my Steam level to jump up like crazy, but it's definitely up there. Hit us with some I games, Michael, I'd, since you're the, I think you're I the leader here. Uh... Let's do you want to dive into games that we watched over the weekend? Yes. All right. Well, um, one of our favorite crews, the games done quick people, um, some good news, bad news situation. The bad news, they had to delay summer games done quick. It is now pushed off to August, I believe. Still but summer. Yeah, late summer. Um, instead, in support of um the I think they were doing um, equipment for medical workers. Oh, P- yeah, they're, uh, they're PPE. Doing dir- it's called Direct Relief, which is a company or a 501c3 that they work, they're working with to provide medical workers with protective equipment and one other side project that they're working on as well. I don't remember what that one is, so I don't want to say because I don't want to yep. get it wrong. Uh, so they they partnered with Direct Relief to put on a Corona Relief done quick. So it was a three day Friday through Sunday marathon, all uh, Twitch screen Twitch streamed from streamers' homes, basically. So set up to do the entire thing remote, and it was a little bit um piecemeal i would say in terms of the the games that they picked which is one of the things that i think we've talked about they do well in picking games from all over the place i don't feel like it was but, haphazard though like don't like the production value was overall good sure yeah i'm not i'm not really talking about the production value more just that the the game choice felt maybe a little more eclectic than it normally is for one of their week long runs. There weren't huge blocks. Yeah. Right. No room no room for a block when some of these games take two, three hours and then you're gonna swerve hard right to play Sonic after Half Life or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Uh but that said, they got some really good uh some really good runs in. My I guess don't know would, how my guess would just be that that was streaming schedule. What do you think? Like oh these yeah I think it was just these times yeah. yeah who was available and and could do it at gotcha. what time got it, got it and definitely some of these were like hey these are people that have done this stuff at GDQs before yes like I, I even recognized some people it was like the guy playing games. Deus Ex mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is the guy that's played it several times at other GDQs and is super funny there and guess <laughs> what he was pretty funny still even yep. he's just like talking a mile a minute the entire time he's playing the game. <laughs> Yeah, so the uh the one of the guys who did the link to the past all dungeons race uh is the same guy who at um AGDQ this past year ran the Twitch chat run where oh, they uh, or crowd con- crowd control crowd control. That was great. Yes, so he was he was running against uh, or racing against another runner. Cool. Uh news on a this is tangentially related to this, but you talked about crowd control. That's a like platform slash like twitch add-on thing that is for a bunch of games oh yeah uh it works in legend of zelda it has now been extended to work in dark souls oh gosh because that game wasn't hard enough yes you could donate to do all kinds of weird stuff to people in dark souls in dark souls 3 oh it's funny dude it's very (laughs) funny i've watched a couple streamers testing it it's also been extended to work in Symphony of the Night now. I saw a stream, someone testing that yesterday. That makes oh, sense. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, there are still quite a few bugs in that one. They soft locked the player like three or four <laughs> times. Because <laughs> like, it's just like add item, take away item. And you're just like, oh, he goes through this door, take away the, the item that lets him go out of the door. He's stuck. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. So very, very funny stuff. And it is so that platform is being actively developed by people in that community and uh, through various game communities. 
So it is cool the stuff that that potentially crowd control will, will enable over time. I like so it. I'm like super excited for more of that kind of nonsense. Like imagine Dark Souls crowd control on GDQ. Like right. what are yeah. they going to do? Just the yeah. shen- shenanigans go up to 11. Yeah. And because the way the the you know the crowd control interface on Twitch works, you have to donate money in order to get access to those uh, things, right? It's like, oh, you yeah. get 100 coins, but 100 coins doesn't buy you anything. It's 1,000 coins in order to take away 50 health or whatever. Yep. And you some of it you have rupee. to collaborate on. Right. Because the prices are so high, you could never yeah. get there, right? Right. Unless you donate $5, and then you have like, you know, 50,000 coins to spend, and you can have him have one HP, or you can send him back to the bonfire, or all <laughs> kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> oh, send back to the bonfire. That would be so mean. Only if, they, sometimes. only if it activates the bonfire. Yeah, that would be the only fair way, right? Yeah. yeah. It, there was so many silly things I saw them doing to the guy playing Soten the other night. And it was just like, he'd be he'd be flying as a bat, and they're like, no, no more bat form. And he just like falls. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, he's like, he's doing the gravity jump to get up this well. It's like, ah, uh, no, more no, gravity. no. It's like, oh, okay, he's using the, the sub weapon. No, no more, no more hearts. <laughs> like... <laughs> The Very hardest, silly. the hardest fights in I can think of in that Star Wars game, are when you have to fight some bounty hunters and like crowd control showing up in the middle of that and doing something to you would be abysmal. They're already impossible. Yeah, I think anyway. the 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 way those games work is like it's easier in the older ones or ones that have like a modding community already around them, right? Uh. And so, like, the more modding there is in a game, then the more likely it is that they'll be able to fit crowd control in there. Yeah. Um, so we might be a ways off off uh, Jedi Fallen Order or crowd control. But you know what? I honestly don't never think say never. I, I, I like it better in... And I can't say I like it better, I guess. I like the... I like what I've seen so far in the 8-bit, 16-bit era of things where it's very clear what people are buying and how damaging it is like, and how yeah. funny it is when there's um you know cuck- cuckoos flying across the screen in a giant oh, yeah. whirlwind in link to the past you're kind of like i get what's happening here but you know like stuff in in souls ty- style games changes so fast i'm not even sure that you catch some of the stuff that's happening the subtleties of yeah, it versus like uh, yeah. oh his rupees his bombs they're going up and down that kind of thing a lot of the stuff that at least in the dark souls one that i saw is like you can change the body type from like you know, the, you know, because the, the character has like character creation options in those games. You can like change them from a like really tall, spindly, skinny person to like a really short, wide person, right? Which then affects the hitboxes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, or like you can give them like giant big head mode, <laughs> um, which I don't think affects the hitboxes, but it makes them look really hit- weird and then blocks your vision because you have this giant head in the middle of the screen. Can they make them switch weapon types? Uh, there was stuff about like you could uh, force them to change to their other set of equipped weapons. Oh man, uh, you know. But if you had a weapon there, it wouldn't. It didn't like uh, you know. It would just like change you to the next weapon. It wouldn't like remove the weapon from you or anything. I think they have a lot of options. It's just that like yeah, if you turn all that stuff on, right. you know, like there was like one you could pay for pacifism where they can't attack, but <laughs> hmm. you, know, we you can be- run past a lot of things in Dark Souls. But you know, yeah, at some you sure point. Can. Got to, got to fight someday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Should we all pick our favorite uh, run? Oh, mm. can I pick just one? All right, I'll go first. Vector not. I've, I'm still going back through so many. <laughs> you don't have to pick. I want to shout out Vector Num. It was a weird game. Uh, very much in the cadence of Hyrule rhythm game genre. But that's cool. Yeah, okay. but the the maps. I don't think I know this game. You should look up this run. It's only about 25 minutes long. You just play as a little block, and the little block has to dance around the screens to a beat, but the you're not dancing around avoiding enemies. You're dancing around on a block-shaped map similar to the Monument Valley style look okay. of a map. Okay. Uh, but the map I, I have is, the idea now. The map is disappearing and appearing with the beats. Oh, okay. So sometimes Whoa. what you're standing on or the direction you were headed will just disappear because the beat goes away. So you have to kind of memorize what the map is going to do. 
And then later on, they add in spikes that pop up out of the map on certain types of beats. And this, that, and the other. And to do this in 20 minutes at certain points during the run, uh, the runner was playing as three different characters at the same time because it's a co-op game. Oh, my God. All right, I'll watch this for sure. (laughs) Yeah, I'll have to put that on the list, too. Vectronom. So I have to I have to shout out one run in particular. There were there were a lot of really great ones that I watched, but one in particular uh, that I just discovered today is one that under normal GDQ circumstances would never have happened. Hmm. And it is a game called Pump It Up. Pump It Up. So I'm going to send you guys a, a clip here. The clip Uh-oh. is just 60 seconds long. Just start it. You don't even have to watch all. Oh my gosh! Is this what if speed running involved basically actual running? This is like DDR. Oh, Oh, it's DDR. It is kind of like DDR, but there is an extra button, and he plays both Both pads. I've seen this is like both pads before. Yeah, I've seen that, but this is like a mode. That's cool, though. It's very cool. And so he does it. it there's not any real rhyme or reason. He basically does. He does an hour long showcase. There's of, ten buttons. He has to hit. An hour. Ten buttons. He does an hour. Oh he did this for an hour? God. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just DDR because DDR only has the four. This right. has a center button too. It, it does DDR have a center button. DDR doesn't look like that. Oh my goodness. Uh, so th- this is uh, uh, so if you take DDR and rotate it like 45 degrees so that all the arrows are angles right, but, instead of the, the cardinal directions but the way right. he was doing the pads there where he had to like hold on to the back of it because his feet were moving so pa- fast well i've played yeah. double ddr before it's a mode in the arcade machine you can just play uh yeah i was gonna say i've seen modes like this in other um ddr games where you play both but i guess this is a like special one for this because you definitely can't do this in like any no, other normal ddr, DDR doesn't yeah. like that so he talks he ta- over the course of the run he talks about the bar which when the game was first introduced you weren't allowed to use the bar but over time the difficulty has slowly gotten to the the difficulty has ramped up to the point where the maker of the game now allows players to use the bars in official competitions this game because otherwise there's just no way that you could move fast enough without leaning this on the ball. This is insane, dude. I'm going to watch this. It, the, the whole run is is crazy. That was the end of it, huh? That you sent us? Yeah. It, no. It looks like... No, that's not the end Every of it. Every time I move I move through this timeline, he's taking a break. I'm trying to find... His timer, his timer is at 56 seconds here, or 56 minutes here, so it's yeah. near the end if it's not the end. Oh, my god. That's crazy. That's, like, super cool. I'm going to go watch that for sure. Yeah. What's the, what's the name of this game, Michael? So people can Pump find it, it up. It is called Pump It Up with exclamation an exclamation point. point. I'm right. pretty certain that this machine used to exist at the Knott's Berry Farm Arcade. That would not surprise me. I because feel like, it looks off brand like DDR. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. For the off brand Disneyland there. <laughs> but his, there's there's a moment. So he talks about, you know, the, the rating system and what you have to do to, it's graded like letter grades. And then there's S, double S, triple S kind of standard wow. video game rankings. Wow. And so he talks about what it takes to get a triple S and cardio. The first, the takes. first moment, <laughs> the, the first moment. Oh, yeah. Definitely when you watch it, leave the chat up. Normally I, I hide the Twitch chat. It's worth watching for this one. <laughs> Um, but he talks about what it takes to get a triple S and you can tell the first song in the run where he makes it happen is just one of his jams. Cause he gets super into the song and is just, he's, he's going by memory, muscle memory at that point and just flying he's just, through the song. He's just feeling it. I really yeah. feel like oh, he's man, memorized so all cool. of this. There's no way. Oh, he's definitely memorized all of them. Uh, and, and you can tell too, there are some of them that are, there are a few that he does in one particular mode that are just designed to be endurance, right? You're just supposed to survive to the end of the song. Uh And there are times when he's still struggling to keep up. But the most, I think probably the most impressive part to me is the fact that he's doing all this and maybe two thirds of the time is still narrating. Do you think he's in his garage? He's got to be in his garage. 
it he's either like in his yeah it's it's a, some special special room he's got set up it might be the garage how yeah. uh, no there's shoes there that's for sure his garage there, how upset do you think his roommates are when he interior. turns that machine on <laughs> uh good question how good are their <laughs> headphones <laughs> yeah i mean you never know man like he could be living in the middle of like the the forest in montana or something I, uh, who knows yeah. that's just yeah. a joke. but it's i i really liked this one not just because of the like actual fitness it takes to be able to do this for an hour but the fact that because of the the quarantine forcing people to stream from their homes he was able to showcase this i just i think it's cool that during a normal gdq they're so long that i kind of have to pick and choose i'm like okay i'm gonna make time to watch this and then maybe i'll go back later and watch vods or i'm gonna make time to watch vods of the thing that i want to watch but on this weekend especially i watched three or four games i i would never have watched like Vectronom and this pump it up thing. I'm definitely going to go watch a VOD of and yeah, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I would yeah. never yeah. watch that. I, I caught a, uh, like I forgot, I caught about like 40% of a run through near Automata, oh, cool. uh, which we've talked that about. Was, that was, that was a crazy broken run. Yeah, just... man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that run mostly for their commentary about how broken the run is, how much they're skipping and the names of all they've given oh, to the, the name, skips. the names of the skips were great. <laughs> The, the ones that were like, were really we skipped, good. we used to skip this by going this way, but then we found a skip for the skip. And so you could skip the skip to skip both that and the thing you would skip normally. And so this is the skip skip. <laughs> so I, like, like, I like the skip that was named after the streamer so that he, the, it skipped it skipped him because he used to talk during this one part about the game. Yep. <laughs> now he doesn't now he get to talk, talk anymore. during that part, so it's the streamer's name, Skip. Oh, pretty so good. good yeah oh, a lot of great stuff in there this uh this time i i haven't gotten to watch a ton of it um but i'm gonna go back and watch quite a few more things so all right uh jj mm-hmm. these next two affect you the most you get to choose between the master chief or the master mario let's get the one that is coming out uh very soon as opposed to the one that is out uh, out of the way, because I want to talk about this Mario Maker 2 thing. Mario Maker 2. Yeah. The game that I have multiple times with asked multiple people that own it if I should buy it, and the answer has always been, eh. So, like, here's the thing. (laughs) (laughs) Mario Maker 2 is cool. It's cool that they did it. Mario Maker 1 is a different game. It does not play the same, right? Despite the fact that these are the same Marios, it, a lot of them, there's more in two, but like, they don't play the same. Like, you can't do the same stuff. Like, the physics is different between Mario Maker 1 and 2, which is insane. Mario Maker 1, it felt like, had a much longer lifespan of updates and stuff over the years than it feels like they've given to Mario Maker 2. So whenever they've put out a new thing for Mario Maker 2... It has been a huge deal. Yep. Timely Nintendo dropping right before this podcast started (laughs) recording. A huge update for Mario Maker 2. The final big update, they say. So the final big update, but not the final time they'll touch the game to give it patches and stuff for broken things. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll clean up stuff, but it's it's the final slated update. Odd to announce that for a game that basically they hoped to be the driving force behind selling their online platform. Yeah. So I, I, what they did to this game is a travesty the way they treated it. Like they threw updates out to the wind with no notice and no like plan. They didn't touch the game for years. It feels like in between like no scheduled releases of content, nothing. It's just like, and one random day in uh, April, we're going to pick, and uh, here's a huge update. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, so they added a, a, the last the last big update to Mario Maker 2 was they added Link and like the Link costume and yeah. all sorts of different that was a weird one. physics and stuff for Link. Like you basically play levels as Link um, in the Super Mario World style, which is crazy. Uh, it, it's like a whole different game at that point. Sure. Well, They have gone and done the thing, maybe, that you thought they should do. 
you can now be Super Mario Brothers 2 Mario. Yeah. In All this right. game. Is that going to Toad make and Luigi su- ha- super happy? Well, they didn't they didn't go as far as some people wanted and give you the ability to make Super Mario Brothers 2 levels, right, but they put the, the physics in. were so different they didn't want to. But you get those physics when you play as Super Mario Brothers 2 Mario. You can stand on enemies and press down and pick them up. Like you get to do all that weird crazy Mario Brothers 2 stuff where like all right. You can like ride a bullet bill and then pick it up halfway through flight and throw it and like throw it was Mario it. 2. Yeah. So they they did build the physics engine in. They just didn't put the levels in. Okay. They like so now you can carry stuff in Mario 1 worlds which was never possible before. Yeah, and it's it's going to make for some crazy new levels. Yeah, it's uh and along with it they added a cursed key which brings everyone's favorite person from Mario 2, Fanto. Yeah. Huh. Um, you know, keys were a thing you could get in that game before. Um, now, if you pick up the cursed one, Fanto comes out and chases you like he does in Mario 2. Uh, they added the frog suit to Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, the power it, balloon to Super Mario World. Right. Which, honestly, those sprites look real dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All fat inflated. But I guess they look dumb in Super Mario World 2, so it's not really that different. The uh, acorn... The Super Acorn to uh, 3D World, I think. Sorry, that's New Super Mario? The Acorn Suit? Yes, I believe so. And then in 3D World, they added a bunch of like, I don't know how to describe them other than costumes, but like you can wear a propeller box on your head or a cannon or a pow block or a bullet bill or a Goomba, and then you get special effects. Oh, so they are functional. Yes, they're they're not costumes. Yes, it, the 3D World one costumes are functional. Although the other ones are, are somewhat functional too. I mean, the pea balloon behaves different, all this sort of stuff. But, you know, the POW block, you can use the POW block costume. You can walk around and stuff, jump with it, and then it works as a POW for three times. The propeller, yeah. you can um, do the... Super high uh, jumps. Yeah. Uh, so that seems pretty cool. The bullet bill one lets you fly horizontally. Uh, which is pretty rad. And uh, that's that's definitely a new way to fly in that game. You always had the um, the propeller suit, which would let you go up and down, but now horizontal flight with that. The Goomba w- one, if you put the Goomba mask on, enemies will, like, ignore you. Just oh, pretty tight. It's like a costume? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, think, they think you're one of them, basically. The cannon one shoots a cannonball, uh, which you can also charge and, like, shoot extra far. That's pretty dope. Uh, they have also added to all the styles, except for 3D World, the Koopa Ling kids. So, you know, your your Ludwig, your Roy's, your uh, Iggy's, and I forget all the kids' names. <laughs> uh, and they all have individual sprites. So, oh, you know, they're you all in Smash, in. and I still don't care. <laughs> yeah, so you get all of them uh, in Mario Maker now. I literally, so like you, I could name Iggy because I think he's the main fighter for that. Uh, you can change between them as the names, but I don't. Who cares? Yeah, I know Iggy and Roy and Ludwig. Very. There's yeah. a girl. Yeah, yeah there, is. there is. I can't remember her name. All right, but like, here's here's what it is, Andrew. They finally did it. You, there's an overworld editor. Yes. Oh, cool. And you can put uh, your levels together, chain them into levels, worlds that follow into each other. Oh, you can have all right. eight overworlds together cool. into a 40 map total. 40 maps? Game. Well, eight, eight overworld eight maps, five. five courses each, total courses. How- how do you so do you package that together and then you get a link for it? How do people come find your overworld and play through it? How does anyone find anything in Mario Maker? It's impossible. <laughs> friend, no one knows. Codes? Yeah, th- there are codes. Uh, there's a code you can type in in the uh, UI that will allow you to access uh, individual levels. But no one knows how worlds are uploaded right now. Like, I, I don't know how it works because no one has seen it. Uh, yeah. Um, but, well, yeah, you'll uh, find uh, out uh, as you're listening to this podcast. Yes, uh, the there also are bonus stages you can put on there. So like the match three section um, 
mini game from I think Mario Three had that one. Yes, probably. Yeah, uh, you know, you get you can place your ghost houses and your castles, and you can place warp pipes and all kinds of stuff that'll take you around your little map. Um, it looks super cool, dude. I wow, it, this yeah. is like the thing I wanted out of this game when it came out. You can make like you know, uh, I guess the way the the way the title thing looks like it works out to be, it's like super name world is the name of it uh and so it seems like you will have yours and it will be named you know super andrew world or super michael world or super jj world okay and i can't tell if that name is something you choose or if it's the name from your like creator profile uh it's not clear exactly how that works um but i mean this is the thing right like I wanted this so bad when the game came out because the thing that sucks about Mario Maker 2 and I guess uh, Mario Maker 1 to some extent is that you just get these individual discrete levels. There's no there's no chance to do build up, right? There's no chance to do like, here's a mechanic, teach it to you. And then the next level, here's one use of that mechanic. And then the next level, here's a different use, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't get to play any just like fun platforming Mario stuff because every level is like either LOL, 8 billion, Kaizo, Trolls, (laughs) <laughs> or the next level is like 800 million enemies on screen at once, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the just like fun run around and have a good time levels don't happen because you then can't play a hard level after that. You only get one or the other. <laughs> it's like this is a way for someone to go like, hey, here's a couple of nice, fun, easy levels. And then like over here's a super hard one, but you don't have to play it. You could just go on to the other thing, you know, like oh, so cool, man. Yep, it's it's what made the curated runs at things like Games Done Quick so much fun to watch because they yeah. they'd solicited these levels and put them together in a way that made the whole product that much more entertaining to watch. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. I'm like really really happy they they finally added that. It was literally the thing I th- most more than any of this other is a way to do that and like you can decorate the overworld you can change you know oh is it a lava overworld or is it a water one is it a green or a a snow or space or all this like clouds you know all the different kinds of backgrounds and stuff you can make it looks like it's only like this one type of overworld style but still man that's it's so cool and yeah, then the were. level the individual levels can be whatever you want like you can have a you know a regular mario level and then a mario 3 and then 3d world and then whatever that's awesome i'm yes do you think the pipeline for this dictated this was last or they just were trying to get one more thing out the door before they lost funding to do more to this game why wait this long for something that obviously you're excited about, which means, you know, tons of other people were probably excited about too. I, I wonder if this is just like the, uh, what can we make here that is good? And then like, just throw it out the door. Mm -hmm. And this is the, like, maybe they were never going to add this, but they're like, well, by restricting it in these ways, you're just using levels you already created like here you go because you can't do everything you could do in like a regular mario overworld right there's still only going to be like the one exit to your level right you can't have levels with multiple secret exits and stuff anymore Mm -hmm. or you never could in mario maker yeah so there's no way to do like oh you go into the ghost house and if you leave this way you go over here the other way you like that's not a thing that's not going (laughs) to be a thing um so you know but it's uh I just have to assume that like this is their like well this is the last gasp this is the things we think you wanted or whatever. I kind of wonder too. There's been there's been a lot of talk in the the run up to the 35th anniversary of Mario, and I wonder if the timing of this might have been not necessarily as as a last ditch something coming out much later, but them pulling the trigger on something that they had squirreled away earlier than intended figuring hey we're going to be coming out with all of this mario re-release and new news but right now there are a lot of people at home with the ability to play this game that was really popular let's drop something a little earlier than intended 
Hmm. Uh, maybe. And like now this is a way to get people thinking and talking about Mario again for a while. And then right, in, exactly. You, you start to build you, up the hype. In a month or two, you go, oh, look, Mario games. Yep. Right. Could be. Very believable. Anyway, I think this is super cool. I uh, will continue my Switch Online subscription and play this a little bit here and there, I suspect. Yeah, I'm I locked into at least a year, I think, of Switch Online. Probably more than that at this point. Just due to the amount of stuff I've bought that came with it. Anyway. All right, man. It's we time. alluded to it earlier. It's time. You have to admit. That he is the chief, the master chief. Mm-hmm. And we played his collection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one one game down, five to go. One, well, two games for JJ. I think he's already yes. beaten Halo 1. I have beaten uh, Halo 1 in the Master Chief collection. That means he has completed 100% of the Master Chief collection. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point, actually. Yeah. Uh, you can click to install the other games, but they are not currently released. Yes, for PC. For PC, uh, that's true. That's a good caveat. Yeah, so I believe all of those games are available on Xbox, but yeah. on PC, uh-huh. it's still ongoing. My understanding is the like beta, the wider release beta testing is ongoing for Halo Two, so it is likely that that will come sooner than later. Uh, Halo 3 and 4 and ODST who knows again they're gonna go timeline release at this point not chronologically you would guess which yeah. almost matches with chronologically which yep. means it's gonna be 3 and then ODST and then 4 it, it actually in fact does match chronologically and timeline now because they put reach out first with Halo right. 1 yep uh, but Andrew and I played co-op through reach uh, which is actually my first time playing reach which was a pretty interesting experience, I will say, as a person who uh, never, ever played Reach at all before. Well, playing, you played basically the two ends of the spectrum of the Halo universe and what they became, right? Like, yeah, the aesthetics, the gameplay, everything is not anywhere near Halo 1 or 2. Right. Yeah, I would say I played basically Halo 1 and 2 back in the day, you know, it, but Halo was all for me was always the game I played at other people's houses. I never owned it. So I played like a bunch of Halo 1 with friends, I played a bunch of Halo 2 with friends, and maybe some Halo 3, but not much and then none of the ones after that. And then jumping into Reach and it's like, "Oh, this is uh, hmm, none of these controls make sense. I don't know what's going on here." <laughs> like I think I went and changed the controls to the like Call of Duty style controls. Oh yeah. Uh and then I that made more sense to me with the like left left, left trigger, trigger, right zoom. trigger stuff. Yeah. Um yeah. But you know, it was uh it was fun. Uh, that, that the lore of Halo is still incomprehensible as far as I can tell. <laughs> um that but, game uh, I had a pretty fun time playing with you Andrew. That was good. Very much a cinema game. Yeah, there's a lot of like slow pan and like dramatic moment happens after the reception i think of halo 3 bungie was kind of like you know people really love this for the lore we should <laughs> make some spin-offs about the universe of halo and one I of think those it was like they were like kind of kind of done with master chief at that point right yeah they thought they were and then, and then they they're like, well, let's make Halo like games other, let's make some Xboxes. other Halos. <laughs> uh, and, and, and one then, of, you know, one, one of those Microsoft was, back. one of those had good writing and one of them was reach. Got him. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. There were definitely multiple points where Andrew was, oh no, this person, something happened to them. And I was like, who, who are they? <laughs> 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 it's like, it, it, the, you could tell the game wanted you to care about these people. You're like, oh no, your squad mate, they're being shot. And it's like, I was shot about 50 times before this. <laughs> they died and respawned. Why don't they figure it out? You know, yeah, there's that, uh, there's that heroic. Re- First of all, the entire city's on fire, but we're going to take the elevator. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that happened so many times. I'm like, 
why would you be taking the elevator in this case? They just get in. It's like a glass elevator, too. You can see the destruction outside. It's like, please, anyone please can shoot if, you, dude. Please tell me the soundtrack switches to play just like soothing music. Oh, that no. Would, that would make me so sometime in big the midst, sweeping explosion music. There's of big course. sleeping explosion music. And sometime in the midst of Halo 3 development, they were like, you know, rock and roll is good. Oh, uh, yeah. They, they, someone Let's was like. Have Guys, 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 and guitars. <laughs> okay, shredding. So you still get the, the ba 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 from the horns, but then you also get <laughs> underneath it. You know, at the same time, it's like some those guy are, those are my sounds, play and Doom. you all have to live with them now. It's like some someone someone on the development team was like, "Hey, like when you play Doom and it has these like sweet metal guitars and stuff, we." We could do that. We could, we could do that. <laughs> this sounds cool. It'd Aliens be fun. are metal. Aliens are metal, dude. It's shooting them is super metal. Hey, man. And then, I, Reach, you know, look, we had a fun time. Look, it was fun. Reach should go automatically near the top of any Halo ranking list for one reason and one reason only. What is it? Uh, it has the pistol in it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> two reasons and two reasons only. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know then. The flood are not in that game. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The flood suck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about Halo One. <laughs> uh, let's yeah, uh, let's let's. You know, Andrew. Andrew, maybe uh-huh. you and I will play through a co-op of Halo One. Oh, yeah, I'll play and maybe it for sure. Less bad when you have two people there i also probably have played halo one through probably 10 times so i'll remember where to go and what to do and how not to get well, killed i will remember that too because i just did it <laughs> um it was nice but I mean, being able game... to have me respawn you a bunch huh yes <laughs> and not just dying and having to go back to a checkpoint uh i'm i'm not good at shooters i'm just gonna go out and say it i'm bad i played these games on normal and i still died quite a bit yeah whatever uh, They're yeah, meant to kill let, you. There's a lot of things I'm letting, happening. Letting people know where I'm at, okay, so that you but understand. How like, many some times people play these games on like legendary sure, and co-op and all this but stuff? You like, don't get neat. there without memorizing what's where, who's doing of course. what, and of three course. quarters of the time we died because it was like turn a corner. Oh, there's a hunter. Oh, the bullet's already out of its gun. I'm dead. Yeah, that's hmm. or I like charging in and then like I turn a corner and it's like oh sword yeah that's guy. the uh, that's the sword guy <laughs> and I'm oh, and I, I watch you guys run into that a couple of times yeah we it's had to do that little pillar two or game. three times and then the third time we're just like what if we just stood here and made the game's AI kill itself or like what if we stood here and used the sniper rifle <laughs> oh. I, was, uh, I, I got back into I, my sniping groove pretty quickly I remembered the the, the lead yeah I used, rifle I used the pistol quick. too Andrew <laughs> rifle <laughs> pistol yeah sure okay uh yeah the, the battle rifle do you is, like uh, do you like that they went back to the halo one physics for reach when they uh you can pistol zoom and if you hit someone out of pistol range i.e they don't highlight it's a one shot <laughs> yeah it was good it's pretty good I like also I like that the pistol in that game is the same model as like the pistol from oh, yeah. Halo the Magnum, One. Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know it's so dumb, but so good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the battle rifle's way better as a With gun weird overall. Bulb. Anyway, it looks like there's a bulge at the front of that gun for no reason, which is like weird. Uh, dude, weird design. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, back to Halo One. The okay. in in Halo One. That game is so much fun when you're fighting the Covenant, right? When you're first like, oh, here's the little like squib guys and the grunts and the elites and you're fighting all these guys. Even when they introduce like the big hunters, it's not that bad. No, it's good. Everything in that game is fun until you they introduce the flood. And when really they introduce annoying. it the first the, when they introduce it the first few time, like the first like level or so that you run into it, it's not that bad. They give you a shotgun, plenty of ammo, you are running away from them and it's like clearly <laughs> shown where you're supposed to go. Yeah. It's like, Hey, like run back this area. You just walked through forward, right? You walk through it forward. Oh no, the flood are coming. Run back to where you were very clear. Everything is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, it, pretty easy to run away. No problem. And then they are there for basically the rest of the game. And it is awful because you don't know where you're going. Right. There's millions of enemies swarming you all. You need to have a shotgun with you in order to kill them. It, like, yeah, you can kill them with other stuff, but it 
the shotgun is the only thing that's effective, basically. How do you like swarming you constantly? How do you like some of those levels when there's one of those tiny little popcorn dudes and you have to kill oh it God. to clear the checkpoint and you can't find yep. it? And you can't find it. Mm-hmm. And oh, sorry, no checkpoint. You go back 20 minutes ago to the last time there were no enemies on screen, which mm-hmm. is never. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just so bad. There's a, there's a particular level in that game that's infamous for this called the library. Oh, where they're just and coming it, everywhere. And because not only that, but the whole level is built like a giant maze. You have no idea where to go. You don't know where you're supposed to do. You're supposed to follow this tiny little orb of light that flies away from you at a million miles an hour. And then it leaves and just says, like, wait here. And you're supposed to like, wait, where? Where am I going? What am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. And the level is unbelievably complicated, even in the remaster of it. Like, so the cool thing about this Halo one on PC, which I guess you can do this on the Xbox also is you can press a button to toggle between like remastered graphics and like original Halo 1 graphics like on the fly anytime which is cool it's very cool and like they have updated models and like you know more interesting sound effects and lighting and stuff but even in the remaster where they tried to paint like some little like arrows on the ground and stuff to tell you where to go in the remaster that weren't <laughs> original it doesn't help man <laughs> You yeah. still don't know where you're going. Yeah, I loved I loved hearing that when they were like, "Hey, uh, we're uh, we're putting arrows in the library." I was like, "Yes, yeah, yeah, dude." It I was know because so, I've lost so necessary multiple hours of my life to being like, "I've already been here." Yeah, woof. Yeah, uh, but I I did enjoy playing Halo One again. I mean, you know, but again, this is a game I had played before. And if I hadn't played it before, I don't know if I would have had any fun at all. I mean, that game took off and is popular for a reason. You know, oh yeah, uh, it created I, again, its own the, genre of of life for a lot of people. For yeah, a I reason. mean, the game the game is called Combat Evolved, and you know, it is the thing that made first person shooters work well on consoles. People want to argue about Goldeneye 007 on the N64. Okay, but no one <laughs> played first person shooters <laughs> no. with like up and yeah. down motion and all this stuff yeah. until the controls got figured out by Halo. Yeah. Oh, and the physics e- even of Halo. Oh, yeah. I- excluding the weird uh, floaty jump, which you can make it, arguments about. Uh, but the, the fact f- that they made the game about like, hey, here's a room or a, a field or a corridor or whatever. The, the fun of the game is not just shooting the guys. Anyone can shoot the guys. It's figuring out how to beat this combination of guys as this guy flanks you to the left and this guy charges you with a grenade and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And then they put the flood in and ruin it all. <laughs> yep. I am glad you got to experience Reach and I was happy to be there for it. It was really fun to watch <laughs> to watch your eyes glaze over at certain moments. <laughs> we were on this level, <laughs> Michael. Where, where I could tell he was just done. Where we were flying helicopters around, and he just lands. <laughs> it's like, what, what are you doing? He just starts clearing out a random building. <laughs> like, what, what's going it on? It turned bud? out that actually, uh, I uh, my video game sense went off because there were landing pads in that building, yeah. and that building was our objective after the one we had. He ignored currently. the gigantic triangle that said neutralize on the map. Okay. I just landed. And I landed at because well, I saw closer. the building. I was like, "Oh, it probably needs me to go here." Yeah. It's like Andrew's going to go shoot that thing, and I'll just stay here. But no, I needed to go over there, see if it was the other direction or whatever. At, but, a cer- at a certain point, I could tell he was so bored that I started doing stuff like trying to jump out of my helicopter onto a Phantom to entertain us, <laughs> uh, driving those, forklifts those, around. Those, like, those few vehicle levels were very stupid. Yeah, uh, yeah. The space combat yeah. one is not good. No, uh, uh-uh, it was bad. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's like playing a really bad Ace Combat game, which was fun was, for about like ten minutes, and then the level took twenty, and I was like, okay, come on. It was one of those moments where I thought everybody at the design studio was like, "Member Descent," and then uh, they're yeah. like, "Yeah, I that was the comment. That, that was the comment I made." <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely one of those where they're like, "Oh man, we are out of ideas. What else can we put in this game? Yeah, what did um, we not put in Halo before? Oh yeah, this oh, oh, oh space spaceships. Combat. Yeah, mm, and that was no, the last time. Don't do it, dude. Don't, don't, don't do, do it that again. 
Oh uh, yeah, that's why we don't, we don't put spaceships in. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. The the flying the helicopters was fine. Um, I I didn't hate the helicopters as much as I hated the spaceships. The controls on the helicopters were still not great, but it was better than. The I spaceships. honestly sure. do not think. And if you, uh, if I'm wrong, please email us at podcast at we were gamers dot com as we begin our outro here. But I honestly do not believe that that locking your altitude thing was a thing in the original game. Oh. I think you had to hold your altitude with the trigger in the original game. You just had to be like feathering it on and off or something? Yep. Wow. Yep. I I really remember being much more frustrated with those helicopters. Because the Xbox, the 360 never had pressure sensitive triggers, right? It was just like it's on and off. On and off. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why the that's why a lot of the vehicles in Halo have that um floaty feel to them. So like if you left off the trigger of that helicopter, it didn't just drop like a stone cuz cuz you turned the props off. Yeah. It it's a lot of the problem slowly. with those vehicles in Halo are that the left stick is just throttle and then the right stick is where you go. Yeah. Mhm. It doesn't matter. Like, if you want to see something that's over there, well, too bad. Now you're steering that way. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, when you get it, real, it's like it's actually extremely dangerous to change where your camera is looking. Yeah. Because you will drive. You you get extraneous inputs, right? Like, if you're, it's like thinking if you're driving a race car and you like want to turn your head to the right to see if there's a person over your shoulder. Well, now you just turn to the car to the right and crash <laughs> into the wall. That's why the warthog is impossible to drive. <laughs> yeah, but JJ, the warthog has a drift button. It does, and it works. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, it has a big sweet gun on the back, which is like multiple, very important. Except the one, the one with the coolest gun, we didn't get to use ever because it was already blown up thanks to Cat. R.I.P. Big bummer. Yeah. All right. Uh, All right. La- last tidbit of news before we go out, Andrew. Yeah. How do you feel? How do I feel? I feel all right. What What do I ask? What are you asking me about feelings? You, I mean, everyone agreed Mealhouse was too good. Oh. Uh, is this enough? It's too much. You think it's too much? Start with three gold is pretty gnarly. He started with three gold before. It's the same. The thing that changes oh, is his right, tavern right, right, tier. Because you could get a double more. if you got... Right, so you start with three gold. So why did why did they say this then? Start with three gold. Because he started with three gold before. The first okay. time he came out, he started with two. And he oh, was terrible. Oh, okay. Got it. Tavern Tears cost one more. Yeah, it's fine. It's probably fine. It's, cer- it's certainly going to negate some of his like overpowered ability to level up early. Yeah. Um, but I... Yeah. He might... Maybe he's fair now. I don't know. Maybe. I'm not, we'll see. I'm, I'm not picking him. That's what I'm saying. Eh, I don't think he's bad. All right, uh, thoughts on Halo Universe, which we will talk about more and maybe we'll stream when we do co-op for Halo 1. Uh, podcast, we were gamers.com or hit us up on Twitter, anywhere, f- Facebook, Instagram. I want to hear from someone whether they, we need to have other people weigh in on the candy debate. Mm, that's I got, true. I got yeah, texts please. about the candy debate. It's true. I was almost called a sociopath. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. You you pulled you pulled out of that dive at the last second. It was hard. We we were really worried about you. I said almost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, yeah. Apparently, the Great Starburst uh, debate is is real. I didn't realize how contentious this was. I, someone got very heated at me. Uh, for not mentioning. Michael, the berry flavors that you uh and you were espousing. Yeah. It's a But that's thing. the like tropical starburst, right? Right. I like the tropical starburst. I uh, I think the I think the we didn't talk about it at the time, but the consensus was that all of the tropical ones are good. Gosh, I you know what? I don't think I have enough tropical ones to like remember what they taste like. Uh, which one? Stop. I mean, they can't be as bad as lemon, though. <laughs> like, you know what? No, no they're, all, like, they're all, they have a higher baseline, the tropical flavors. They do. The The thing you don't want with the tropical flavors, two things you don't want. I'm just going to throw out there. Two, thing, two things you don't want. You don't want the tropical starbursts that are remixed with the original starbursts. There's like, you know how the bat starbursts come in the, the 
the brick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah but there's also Starburst right? you can get in a bag, and the bag have like, hey, you could have the mix or the trop the regular mix or the tropical in here. You're you're saying it's a mixed bag, Andy? It's a sure is. <laughs> well then it you sounds got, like what that bag is is a bunch of lemon starbursts well that's the problem is because <laughs> well, this is when i'm done with it <laughs> part of the problem is that there's yellows in the tropicals oh right it's a different yellow yeah yep. it's banana right uh i don't know um, i don't remember sounds familiar i forget i don't anyway. remember but the other ones anyway. are easy to tell apart because they're like neon colors anyway the other thing you don't want are starburst jelly beans Ooh. Fight me in the in they, the comments they're, below. They're they're okay for jelly beans, but like yeah, they're not the jelly beans you want probably. 